Hey there, Derek Rydell here, founder of The Law of Emergence and author of the best-selling books, Emergence and the Abundance Project. And I'm just really, I don't know, can I say excited? I don't know if excited is the right word. It's, there's, a deep, there's a deepening happening in the world right now, and I think many of you are feeling it. And I wanna to talk today more about truth. This is really the topic at hand. And what it really takes to discover and live truth, what, what truth really is, and why the journey or the path or the commitment to discovering your deeper truth and the greater truth that's seeking to emerge in our world and to living it is the most important priority that we can possibly have. And when I say truth, I don't merely mean an intellectual idea. I don't really mean uh, just a concept or a construct. In fact, I'll just start right there to say that truth can never ever be the words that are being said or written. Truth is not something that you can measure. Truth is infinite, right? And that's why it says in the Bible, for example, the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Or the Zen statement of talking about truth and saying, that the words you're speaking around truth, whether it's scripture, philosophy, somebody's conversation, whatever, is like the finger pointing to the moon. The finger isn't the truth. The words you speak aren't the truth. The truth isn't out there. The truth is in here and it's infinite. But so, so we, we use words and we use language and we use actions to try to get to the truth and try to articulate our best guess at the truth as an evolutionary process, okay? So truth isn't something you can ever put in a box or put in a book. It's also why they have a thing called Zen koans, and they would give certain koans to the students, like what is the sound of one hand clapping, or show me the face your parents had before they were born. Or, I'm sorry, show me the face you had before your parents were born. And these are not questions you can answer intellectually. They're questions that you can't find the answer in your mind, but the contemplation of them, the desire for the truth of them, eventually frees you from the confines and the constructs of the mind, really the simulation, the storyline, your identity construct, your map of reality, and allows you to have a moment of satori, of a, of a touching of the truth. And truth is a lie. It's a frequency, it's an energy, it's light, it's love, it's, and, it, and it literally transforms you, it literally feeds you. And then it does manifest as new thinking and new words and new actions, but it's not words. That's why if you just read a Bible, any of the Bibles of the world, or, or listen to some teacher and you, or preacher, and you think you're gonna get the truth, you're going to get ultimately lost or become a follower instead of a leader. So even the words I'm saying aren't the truth. It's like poetry. It's like great art. It's trying to create a condition that forces you out of some construct, that forces you to see in a different way. And the moment you see in a bigger way or a, or a more expanded way, there's a level of freedom that occurs and there's a level of new insight that occurs. Because most of what we're living is we're living a relative perception and projection of an infinite perfection, of a grand truth, right? Like an aperture on a camera, our awareness catches a little glimpse as it opens up, a little glimpse of the landscape of ultimate reality, and then it creates a perception. And it projects that on the screen of our mind and creates a picture, right? And then we put a frame around that picture and we call it reality. But it's not reality, it's a picture of reality. And reality is infinite, so it's not all of reality. It's a picture of Uncle Joe or Aunt Jane. It's not actually Uncle Joe or Aunt Jane. It's a picture of a tree. It's not actually what that tree really is. It's a picture of the world, but it's not what the world really is. And so we walk around in a museum of our mind filled with framed pictures that we then point to and say that's real or when we don't like them we try to destroy them and burn them down and get rid of them or we covet them and we put all of our resources to 
making the temperature just right so that those pictures can never be changed. So there's a perfection, there's an infinite perfection, then there's our relative perception, and then there's our projection, and then we put a frame of protection around it and call that identity, call that our map of reality. So it's really important that you understand this as a framework for what I'm about to get into and what I've been talking about lately, uh, because it's really controversial in today's times, and the title today of Cancel the Cancelers, and we all know pretty much what cancel culture is now, and, and again, I'm a very liberal, progressive individual. I've spent my whole life being liberal, progressive, democratic. But what I see is happening increasingly in our schools, in our politics, in our social media, and in our world is anything but progressive, anything but liberal. Now, we don't have to talk about all the problems of the radical right, and I don't want this really to be political although we have to include that because that's the forum where so many of these ideas are being hashed out, whether it's philosophical, political, or religious. But, but we have to include that. But this really isn't a political statement when I talk about the right or the left. You need a right and a left wing to fly. Let's just start there, right? You can't fly very well with just a left or a right wing. But there's, there's incredible extreme you know, nonsense going on on both sides. But one of the more dangerous things that I see right now, besides just outright totalitarianism and fascism that is seeking to happen, is the, is the radical reaction to it, which is not progressive or liberal or free at all. And that's this whole cancel culture, which basically has as an underlying premise, if I don't like what you're saying, if what you're saying hurts my feelings, if what you're saying scares me, if what you're saying disrupts or disturbs me or threatens my point of view, I have to destroy you. I have to cancel you. We have to get rid of you, okay? Now, I'm not talking about speech that is literally um, engendering violence. Free speech only goes so far. You can't shout fire in a theater. You can't speak specifically and tell people to go hurt people. That's not free speech, that's illegal. You can't have speech that says, go hurt those gay people or go hurt those people of color or go hurt those women or whatever. I'm not talking about that, right? And that's much rarer than we think. I'm not talking about literal abuse. I'm talking about having a forum where people can speak and, and really with, with sincere an insincere intention to, to discover the truth, right? Which is not the same as what appears to be a desire to have a conversation, which is really a desire to prove your right and prove their wrong. That again is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about really why free speech is one of the core foundations of a democracy. Because our ability, the only way we evolve is as we get clearer and clearer on our deepest truth, and then we have the courage to live that truth. What I say, say yes to your yes. To live that truth in our everyday lives. A real thought leader, whether of your own life or in the world, is one that has the courage to discover their deepest truth, that that is emerging, and live it with courage in service of the highest good, no matter the cost. Even and especially when it goes against the status quo because evolution always goes against the status quo. Real evolution always goes against what is already established. And every one of you, especially if you wanna be a change maker, an influencer, a thought leader, a healer, a teacher, every one of you, and even in your own lives if you don't, you have a truth to bring forth. You've never happened before. You are unprecedented. You are unique individual expression of life that is unprecedented. And if you don't have the ability, the courage, and the clarity to discover and live your truth, really the truth, but in the unique way it wants to express as you, you will not evolve, your life will stagnate, and you won't be able to bring forth the gift and the difference and the download that you came here for. And a life that is not lived in that way is an unused life. It's a waste of an incarnation. It's like a seed that just sits on fallow ground and never gets planted and never grows to blossom and share its flower or fruit. 
There's a truth in you. There's a destiny in you. There's a divine design in you, a unique way that infinite existence, love and life and beauty is seeking to emerge that as it does, it adds to the collective ecosystem of humanity and allows an up-leveling and an evolution of, of the collective consciousness, whether it's in your family, in your relationships, in your business, in your industry, or beyond and into the world. Each one of us has a role in that, and especially if you're a change maker, thought leader, or influencer, even more so. And the credo of a real thought leader is, I'm gonna do the work to discover my truth, to live my truth, and, in, and when necessary, to speak my truth in service of love, in service of the highest good, no matter what. Not if it's okay, not if it's expedient, not if, unless it's too scary or uncomfortable or inconvenient or people don't like me, then I won't. No, there's no evolution. There will become stagnation, you will become a slave or a victim or a victimizer, right? Because life will get stuck. It won't blossom, it won't bloom. And if you don't bloom, you are pruned, right? It's a principle. So you have to be willing. If you wanna grow and you wanna thrive and you wanna live the life you're here for in a fulfilling and meaningful life and a life that makes a difference, you have to be willing to discover your truth or again, I wanna say the truth, because you don't really have your own truth, but you have your own unique iteration or expression of the truth, and then have the structures and the courage to live it. And to live it especially in the ways and in the areas where it's not convenient, where it doesn't always feel safe, where you don't always feel supported, because that's your evolutionary edge. That's where in your intimate relationships, you will help to elevate love and companionship. And if that partner's willing, take the whole relationship to a new level. And if they're not, your relationship will go to a new level and you'll attract and manifest your perfect mate or within your family to not merely get stuck in family legacy and lineage, but to elevate tribalism and elevate your family to the next level and really leave a lasting legacy that changes the lineage of the sins of the father being passed on to the son. That requires an individual with courage to live their truth, not just fit in with the tribe, not just make sure mom and dad like me and people don't reject me, or not just to make sure my partner doesn't reject me and still loves me. That's called being a slave. That's called being a victim. That's called being an indentured servant. That's what the great masters like Jesus and Buddha and all them came along to free us from. That's even what, what Martin Luther King Jr. was doing and Gandhi was doing, but in a political or social environment. To free us from our slavery, free us from our indentured servitude, free us from making someone outside of us our source and get us connected again to our own sovereign power. But that's only possible if you have the courage to live your truth. And if you're willing to live your, the only way to live your truth, or one of the most important ways in a society, is you have to be able to speak it, and you have to be able to listen to other people's best guess at reality, at their truth. And what, what's evolving in our culture, which is the shadow, really, of truth and of liberalism, is safe spaces and microaggressions and identity politics and a politicization and weaponization of really important issues such as racism and misogyny and social and economic injustice. They're being weaponized and politicized to gain more power, and they have very little to do with truth and very little to do with real freedom and real evolution. I'm sorry to say, and I know it's controversial, and who am I as a white guy, privileged white guy, to be saying that? But I think if you're honest, you know it's true. And for those of you that this is triggering, it's important to know that our commitment to being free, the only way we can get free is to know and live our truth, and the only way to know and live our truth is to have the courage and the humility to look at our own reactions, our own triggers, our own traumas, and to recognize that most of what we're experiencing is not really what's going on out there, but is what's already been going on in here, and the experience out there is recapitulating those core childhood traumas and dramas and, and 
core archetypes, but it's doing it so that we can discover it, we can get the gift and the lesson from it, we can build resilience and strength and stamina and get wisdom from it and actually get free of it. Because everybody has challenges, everybody has ex bad experiences, everybody has a cross to bear. Some people it's because of their color, some people because of their gender, some because of their sexual preference, some because they had too much privilege. I've met plenty of privileged people that are suffering, addicted, full of compulsive behaviors. Whatever the color, race, creed, religion, gender, sexual preference, everybody is suffering and struggling in their own way and everybody needs to do their own work. Nobody outside of us can ultimately do our inner work and set us free. But those of us that are willing, and again, I'm not saying there aren't challenges out there. I'm not saying that we, certain of us are not, don't have dharma to help change the legal system and the social you know, justice and um, change the economic system from a consumer-based economics to more of a gift-based and a creative-based economics to change certain levels of politics or the legal system so that it's fair and equal and unbiased to all colors, which is impossible because we're human, but more so. And you know, there's so many things that do need to be improved. But what, what I want you to know is they can never be improved. And nothing out there can change for real until the change occurs inside us. And even if the change isn't occurring out there, if we become the change we want to see in the world, instead of trying to control other people, cancel other people, shame and blame and attack and destroy things outside of us, which I'm telling you what I know is a waste of time and worse than that, it's going to perpetuate suffering for you and others. Instead of that, if we instead begin to make our project the absolute discovery of the truth of our being, why we're really here, who we really are, what we're really made of and made for. Take no thought for the life out there, but seek first the kingdom of heaven within. If we be, be still and know that the I in the midst of you is mighty, that your potential is always bigger than the outer problem, always. No matter if you're Nelson Mandela in prison for 20 some years, if you become the master, the master of your fate and the captain of your soul, you will arise like the phoenix from the ashes, become the president, end apartheid. The power within you is unimaginable. The genius within you is unimaginable. The capacity to love, to create, to heal, to uplift and up level is unfreaking imaginable but there's no way to get access to it. As long as you are seeking to cancel other people that you don't like, as long as you are caught up in the hypnotic spells that are everywhere rampant right now, as long as you merely are gonna identify yourself as white or black or male or female or this or that and not identify yourself as a divine sovereign being that transcends all of that, and then you can come back and enjoy and celebrate your color, creed, race, religion, sexual preference. By all means, let your flag fly. But don't get caught up in a box. Don't get caught up in a label. Don't get caught up in identities and maps of realities that are limiting. Because all of those stories of good and bad are stories of limitation and they are hypnotic spells designed by the ego to keep you trapped to make you believe you either can't change, to make you think you're changing when you're just going in circles, or to stop you at the border of your known self and drive you back again. But if you will have the courage to say no more, nobody owes me anything. I have a oneness with God, with life, with truth, with love. I came here with everything that I need to fulfill my life, like every seed comes with everything it needs, and I'm endogenous, not indigenous, so that means I carry my weather with me, I carry the light with me, no matter if the sun is shining or what side of the tracks I'm planted on, when I stand in my divine sovereignty and I cultivate the conditions of my heart, mind, and soul, and body, there ain't nothing out there that is a power over me and I will rise up and transcend and transform and transmute those conditions. I will turn the lead into gold. I will become a divine alchemist of my experience. Can't touch me. 
My light will shine so bright people will have to wear sunglasses around me. I will shine with so much love that no matter how many doors are closed against me, no matter how many hearts are closed against me, no matter hate is thrown at me, my love, the love of God in me will be stronger than that. As I tell the story of my, one of my deepest mentors, who was also the godfather of my son and the best man at my wedding, this powerful black man that was actually part of the Black Panthers, I believe at one point, and dressed more I got all my style from him, and very, which, you know, if you look at me now, you wouldn't think I got much, but he's probably looking down on me and going, dude, did you learn nothing? But, but he would work in the social services system, and he worked with skinheads and Nazis and all of this, and he, there was this one case he told me about, there were many, but he brought, he, all he brought, he was just pure love, pure divine love. And this kid, you know, hated black people and wanted to kill them or, you know, whatever the nonsense is. But he just brought love and he had done the work within himself. He knew who he was. He knew he was a man of God and a man of power. And there was nobody and nothing that was going to convince him otherwise. And, and, and he held this man with such love over a period of time, even though this man was railing against him and cursing at him and all manner of slurs. And by the end of this period, this young man, this young skinhead neo-Nazi, said, I don't know what you did to me, man. And I'm not still quite sure what to think about all those other people, all those other black folk, but I love you. I love you, man. Like, think about that, right? That whatever, whatever the condition you face, whether it's a condition of color or creed, race, religion, gender, the outer condition is not fundamentally what's in your way. It's an inner conditioning. And I'm not downplaying the outer conditions. I'm not saying it's not hard and it doesn't suck. I've gone through tragedy this year. I could look at this year and just give up. Thank God I understand these principles and I have a practice, or I would have. And that's why I want you to understand this because things are not, things are gonna get harder in some areas of life and for a lot of people. But for those that are equipped with this understanding that if you're willing to speak your truth and live your truth, I don't mean just vent your opinion. I mean, do the real work to get in touch with who you really are, why you're really here, what you're really made of and made for as a divine image and likeness and expression of life and love and God. If you're willing to do that and develop a practice and a way of life so that you can begin to live into that in small ways at first, just in how you hold yourself with your partner or with your children or with your parents, how you begin to ask for what you really want and stand for what you really believe and show up and treat yourself with respect and value and honor. There's, there's simple ways at first. I mean, that may not be simple for some of you. But as you begin to discover, ask the question, have the prayer more than I want to, I want to change, fix, control, manipulate anyone or anything, including myself. I want to know the truth that sets me free. I want to be an instrument in a transparency of reality, of ultimate reality. Open my eyes, God. Open my heart, divine love. Make me a pure, strong instrument of the truth, of the light that sets me free and everybody else around me, come what may. You wanna to begin to pray that prayer, have that mantra, make yourself a prime candidate for real revelation, real insight, real breakthroughs. And, and this is really possible. And no matter what challenge, even tragedy you may have gone through or be going through, you can transcend it and you can come out of it stronger. And, and the more you develop that inner fortitude and that character, the more you are activating your destiny because your conditions don't determine your destiny, your character does. And your character is determined by your attitude, by the habits you built based on your focus, your commitment. As I've been talking about recently, don't live in everybody else's world. 
Don't get pulled by all the hypnotic conspiracies and political shenanigans where it's really just parties jockeying over power of voter blocks and it has very little to do, even the, a lot of the social movements, who's taking over in those areas is wounded people that are seeking power or revenge or some kind of satisfaction or relief. There's a lot of good people in there too, don't get me wrong, but the movements, the momentum of many of the movements in our world right now are being driven by the shadow. And they will drive you off a cliff if you follow them. But if you follow your deeper truth, if you do the work to discover free from all the world's beliefs, freed from your life story, freed from all of that, to discover, show me the face I had before my parents were born. Show me who and what I really am. Not the story of me, not what the world says I am, not what, what I believed even that I am, but show me who I really am. Show me what I'm really made of. Show me what I'm really made for. Use me life, make me an instrument worthy and strong and capable enough to live that seed of potential and purpose planted in the soil of my soul. I'm willing, I'm ready, send me, use me. If you continue to make that your prayer, and then when you're triggered, when you're scared, angry, reactive, judging, blaming, shaming, attacking, pause, take a breath, write down what's coming up, and bring that into meditation and prayer and seek to discover what is it within you that needs healing? What is it within you? What is that judgment that you're projecting out there that you need to embrace? As Jesus said, love your enemy and the enemy is in your own household. All the enemies are in us, right? We're not in the world, the world is in us. And as I said recently, we wanna live in a beautiful world and we have the power to build that beautiful world in our heart, in our mind, in our consciousness. And as we do that, no matter what the world is out there, we will be free. And we will then be guided and directed and able to claim more territory for ourselves. This is what happened with a Nelson Mandela. This is what happened with a Gandhi or a Martin Luther King Jr. or many individuals that have risen out of that by not buying into the stories, by not telling a story of victimhood or victimizer, by actually doing the work. Oprah, from abuse and racism to who she is, on and on and on. And this could be your story too. And I'm here to support you, and especially if you are feeling that urgency of emergence and that desire to make a difference in the world, and you're not sure exactly what it is, I want to invite you to join the Thought Leader Academy Facebook group where we're gonna be doing a lot more of this work. In fact, coming up is my seven day free change maker challenge where we're gonna do some of this deep dive work to discover really what you're made of and made for and how to develop that and launch that in the world. My whole mission is to develop the next generation of thought leaders, influencers, and change makers. People who have the real courage and clarity to live their truth, to bring their light in their unique way into the world so that together we really can create a world that works for the highest good of all. So come join the Thought Leader Academy. You can also go to my brand new site, DerekRydell.com. Go into the free training section and get a bunch of free trainings that can support you around this, including a visualization vibration meditation that will help you activate your deeper vision, shadow work, module or audio that will help you get in touch with those parts of you that have been crying out for a long time, but you haven't understood them. There's so much I wanna support you on. So as Jerry Maguire would say, help me to help you. Go join the Thought Leader Academy. Go to DerekRydell.com and check out the free trainings and stay tuned for the Changemaker Challenge and take something away from this. Comment about what are you getting from this and what's an action you're gonna take and share this with friends or loved ones that you think can be benefited by this because the only way the world out there is gonna change is if the world in here changes. And where two or three are gathered together in agreement that are doing this kind of work, we develop a new world order. It really does happen that way. All great revolutions and evolutions have not happened by people merely going out and fighting 
but by people coming together and transforming themselves. That's how a real revolution happens, a revolution in our hearts and souls. I can't wait to support you more, share what's coming up for you here. I often comment on the shares. And until next time, remember to live authentically, love unconditionally, and follow your destiny. Take care.